Okay, I'm going to quickly go back to the user manager. Um, I want to show you how adding a user to Project Fork will automatically add the user to the user manager. Okay, so let's go to users. Um, now, if you have the workspace select or no workspace selected, you won't be able to add a new user. You must have a workspace selected to add the user to the project. Okay, so let's click on new. We're going to say Mel, Mel smells. We'll have her as a registered user. Give her a password. And we can't add her to groups right now because we don't have any groups created. In a minute, I'll show you how to create a group for a specific project. Okay, we'll say ledwed at gmail.com. And we're going to leave all of this other information blank for now. I'll click on save. Now, if it did not automatically take you back to the user group or to the users, then there was something wrong. You should have seen Mel in here and it, she's not, she hasn't been added. So let's double check the user manager and make sure she's not already in there. And she's not. So let's try this one more time. Users, web design, okay. It could have been that I typed the password incorrectly or something was wrong. So let's try this again. Registered user. Okay. We'll save. And voila, there she's been added. It could have been that I typed in something incorrect. Okay, now we'll go to user manager and we should see Mel smells in there. Now again, if we go back to Project Fork and delete Mel smells from the project, she will not be deleted from the user manager. Okay? Again, Project Fork is separate. It will automatically create the user um, within the core, um, but it, it it's vice versa, basically. If you delete, delete the user from, from the user manager, she won't be deleted from Project Fork. Okay, and that is um, how to add a new user to a project. Let's add a group to a project. Okay, if you don't have a workspace selected, you won't be able to add a group. However, within here you can edit your your user groups. You can edit edit the visitor information, the permissions in here. You can um, edit projects, create projects, just select or deselect whatever you want the the user to have access to. For now, we'll just cancel out of this. Okay, we want to create a new group to web design project. We'll say new. Um, we'll give it a title. We'll say system admins. Description we'll leave blank, and then we'll give them permissions to certain things. Um, for now, we're going to give them permission to pretty much everything as a system admin. Okay. Time all. We'll just leave everything else just the same. We can add members to this, and again, these members have to be added to the project in order for them to be automatically added to this group. We'll say Lady Lad better because we want to give her super admin access to everything. We'll say save, and that is how to create a new group to your project. It's simple. All right. So, um, user access is always a tricky thing, okay? Um, if we go to config, you can change permissions there as well, okay? So we go to config, and we go to sections. Under here, we can decide what special conditions we want to give to each section. So, say we go to projects, and we want to change the conditions there. Okay, the special condition is set to public right now. That just means that if you have it set to, a fo to the front page or to the front end, it will be public. Okay, however, if these special conditions are set a certain way, that is how the public will see it. Okay, or not see it. So, say we want to create projects, you must be logged in. It is just currently set for you to be logged in in order to create projects. Okay, 
or it can be set to public, it can be set to must be in workspace, um, must be logged in. All the access settings are different per, per section, really. You have create projects, review projects, edit projects, delete projects, and so on. Okay, Let's cancel out of this. Same thing goes for tasks. Again, be in workspace or not, same thing, must be logged in. It really depends how you want your users set up or how you want your company set up. Um, so you can also play with your permissions config um, in the back end. Okay, we'll cancel out for this, cancel out of this for now. Okay. So now we've gone over projects, we've gone over tasks, we've gone over users and groups. Let's go over files now. Okay. We'll go to files. Right now we have design files and development files set up. Okay, if we click on here, we should see what files are set up. There's no files within those folders. Okay, so these files, no files within these folders. Okay, let's go back. Um, what we can do, we can add or upload new files directly into the root, you'll see here, or we can add new files within that folder. So we have root design files. Okay, um, let's just do it for the root for now. Let's upload a new file. Browse, we'll say we want Project Fork logo, open, and save. Okay, now we see that in the root. But we want to go ahead and just put it into a folder. Let's move that into a folder. We'll select it, move. Select which folder we want to go in. It's a logo, so we'll say Design Files, and click on Move. And voila, it's under Root, Design Files, Project Work Logo. Um, 